What do you think, boys? I think this is gonna be super cool. It already is super cool. Are we filming? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Everything's so cool. So it's day four on the greenhouse build. And so the excavator is just undoing the straps on his machine right now. He's gonna back that thing off and get over here and start working. We've got a whole day planned with him. And the most important thing of the day though is that we're gonna get this greenhouse filled up with soil so that we can build the, the top of it. The boys have done an exceptional job laying the pipes in the ground. They've covered all the holes so that soil can't get into the pipes. We've pinned all the pipes, which I'll show you in a second, so that as we're backfilling, we're gonna carefully add the soil in so that the pipes don't get pulled apart because we want them to convey air. So that's gonna happen. We're gonna put a certain amount of subsoil in. We basically wanna bring the soil level up to about uh, one foot from the, the sill, basically of the foundation. So we're gonna have subsoil and then we're gonna put a foot of topsoil on top of that, knowing that we're gonna add compost and manure down the road. Um, so they're gonna do that. After we've got the first tier backfilled, then they're, the boys are gonna get in the ground, they're gonna bring pipes in, they're gonna connect all the pipes up. Then the second tier of soil is gonna come in and then we're going to make sure that's properly spread around. And then Alex has brought 14 yards of topsoil, so we're gonna stick that into the hole. We're probably gonna bring another 14 yards. I figure there's gonna be 30 yards just of topsoil on the ground. Um, all, the around, all the way around the greenhouse is gonna get backfilled. And then right beside me is a giant pile of soil that's been sitting here all summer. The kids have been playing on it. And so that's gonna get spread out in the yard. And we're gonna have these beautiful terraces where we're gonna grow most of our food on the property. So that's all getting going. A couple other things that we're gonna to do today. I mean, earth mover is expensive to hire, but they do an enormous amounts of work in a really short period of time. I've got three pond locations that I wanna get set up for next year. And so I need to dig test holes and I'll do a, a separate video on that for the channel. And we're gonna go look at the sand, silt, clay composition of each of these three test holes and uh, send it off to a lab so that we can figure out if those holes are gonna hold water. And depending on what we find, we'll determine how we seal those holes, whether it's a uh, geotextile benti ben bentonite liner. So I think it's called a bentonite impregnated geotextile, I think it's the official technical name. Or if we can just spread bentonite, or if there's enough clay in the hole to actually make it happen. Um, so we're gonna have those three test holes kind of as the final piece of today's project. So stay tuned, you'll see it all getting backfilled. I'm gonna put this camera on time lapse and kind of capture the whole uh, action of the day, uh, hopefully, so you guys can take a peek at it and hopefully learn a few things. Okay. Okay, so when we're backfilling, you'll see that some of the pipes are kind of clustered together. And so we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have some separation between the pipes. Not so much from a thermodynamics perspective, but also just so that the, the pipes are properly supported all the way around, they don't get crushed when we're backfilling. Okay, so 
the video that we produced to conclude the completion of the earth battery, uh, I didn't get sound or something, I'm not sure. So anyhow, I was making a video to complete the completion of that earth battery. And uh, now in between when we did that, this thing's now up, which is really exciting. Um, and there's lots more videos coming about um, the construction of the frame or the skeleton of the greenhouse. So I'm gonna put a story gap in there. I'm not gonna tell you anything about uh, the frame right now and you'll have to wait till it comes out on the YouTube channel, but lots of exciting content coming uh, about how this whole thing goes together. And then uh, not tomorrow, but the day after, the sheathing and the cladding are going up on the greenhouse as well as the polycarbonate. Heck yeah. Anyhow, um, I'm supposed to be giving you guys a roundup on the earth battery. So let's go inside, take a quick peek and um, talk about some of the lessons learned. So all the soils in here, we put in, we put some of the subsoil that we dug out back in and backfilled. You saw that in the video. And then we brought in, I think 45 yards of, 30 yards of soil and, and 15 yards of compost. And the compost had um, some grain and some radishes in it, obviously, because they're growing. So we kind of got a free cover crop as a result, which is great. And oh man, this is awesome. Check this out. Um, okay, so these are called Rastafarian roots. Basically, the soil that kind of clumps, and I've done other videos on our YouTube channel about this, uh, clumps around the root is where all the microbiology is. And so the fact that we're getting this and we haven't even grown a crop in here is really exciting. It means that we have a really good microbial population in the compost. So we should have an epic crop next year. Um, this is a really good indicator of soil health. You don't have to look at a microscope to see this. So Rastafarian roots is what they're called. And let's just see if that was just a, a one-off example. Nope, look at that. Kick ass. Let's try another one. Oh, look at that one, the monster. That one's right out of Jamaica. Um, anyhow, so we've got this uh, great soil in here and uh, all this styrofoam is gonna get clad so you won't see that anymore. It'll be protected uh, from the sun as well as any kind of rototilling or activity that goes on, on in here. Now, so one of the lessons that I learned as a result of installing this, this system this time uh, that I think would have made the backfilling a little easier is I might try and uh, put some screws into the fittings um, and hold them into the pipe. I don't know how it will work with the PVC. It could crack the PVC. It might not be the right pipe for that, uh, but that's something that I would have tried because even though those fittings were pretty tight, um, they were still at risk of coming out and some of them might have come out. Hard to say. I don't think they did just because we were really careful about making sure they stayed in as the earth mover moved the material back in. But a little bit more effort has to go into how we connect those pipes and keep them connected when we're backfilling. I got a couple of questions from folks. Um, why didn't I put insulation underneath the pipes? Um, so many years ago, I did some research for the town of Vulcan where we looked at storing thermal energy seasonally. So we would harvest energy all summer long with solar thermal systems and then store it underground and then extract that heat back out to heat the town of Vulcan. The project didn't end up happening, but the result of that thermodynamic modeling that we did showed that bottom insulation has no real impact on heat storage because heat rises. So you don't actually have to put insulation below the pipes in order to improve the thermal efficiency of the storage system. That was one question that we got from one of the first videos we did on this earth battery. Another question that I got was that my pipes were too dense and that maybe I should have had more tiers of pipes. And so the number of pipes was chosen based on the airflow that we're going to run in the collector, which is going to be between 400 and 900 CFM. And we use that, we calculate that with the uh, passive solar greenhouse tool that we built in order to design passive solar greenhouses, which you can get. And I'll put a link in the show notes below if you want to design your own system. Based on that, each one of those weeping tiles should receive about 10 CFM, cubic feet per minute. However, they can go as high as 20 CFM, um, and so you can double the airflow rate if you choose to. Um, and so based on that airflow, we calculated out how many pipes we needed. I don't know that adding or reducing the density, our model showed that it didn't really have a big effect on the overall efficiency. Time will tell uh, because now we've done our modeling. We're going to actually try it empirically. We're going to do our own um, experiment and see how 
effective the design is that we came up with in a digital model will be in real life. And the data that we get from that is going to feed back into the model so that we'll be able to improve it down the road. So now uh, we're ready to go, pretty much. Uh, cladding's gonna go on here in a couple of days. We've got this pipe sticking out right here. So this is going to be the inlet pipe and it's gonna tie into a manifold down here, which is going to pick up air from a solar air collector that we're gonna put on the north wall. So this solar air collector is gonna be black and have perforations in it. So any low angle light is gonna hit it and it's gonna heat the metal up. And then the already warm air inside the greenhouse is gonna warm up even more. It's gonna get sucked down into this manifold, pushed into here, move through the system, and then end up coming out the outlet right there. We may end up putting a manifold on that side as well and running the air all the way along the greenhouse so that we have even distribution of cool or warm air depending on if the system is heating or cooling because this system has the ability to both heat the greenhouse as well as cool it as well. Um, and so we may be able to get a really nice benefit during the cooling season to move uh, cool dry air through the greenhouse as well as through the heating season to kind of evenly distribute that warm air uh, through the system as well. Time will tell, there's literally an unlimited number of permutations and combinations, uh, and I'm really excited to be testing out this greenhouse. It's gonna be the largest personal greenhouse that we've had. We've worked on commercial greenhouses before, but this is gonna give us a, a really great opportunity to empirically test some of the ideas that uh, we've had that we haven't been able to test up, up till now, as well as to scale up our growing. Um, we've been growing in a smaller passive solar greenhouse for many years, and I'm just thrilled to see what this thing will grow. So stay tuned to the, tuned to the channel. We finally found our drone. Our drone's been taking footage um, around the, the greenhouse. We're gonna be flying it again this weekend as the cladding goes up. And then there's basically an unlimited amount of content that we're gonna be producing inside the greenhouse over the coming years. So hopefully you found that interesting. If you did leave any of any questions, feel free to put a comment down below. I do read them. I don't always respond to them. It depends on the comment. And uh, like I said, I'll leave a link to our greenhouse design course in the show notes below as well if you wanna check that out. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Talk soon.